Hello there and welcome to my Blender animation tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to teach you how to animate this little Roblox guy so we can make a little movie out of him. So without further ado, let's get to the learning. So let's get started with um, opening up this file and starting to animate. So you'll, the name of the file is called Animate Me. If you just open it up, I'll just show you around um, and see what's in this. So Blender, if you've never used it before, there's a whole bunch of different um, layouts that are specifically for different things within uh, the Blender um, environment. The one we're looking at uh, is animation. Uh, what you do with uh, 3D view over here is that if you press the middle mouse button, you'll be able to orbit around so that you're able to uh, move around the thing that's centered. You'll be able to use the scroll wheel to scroll in and out. And if you hold the middle mouse button down and the shift key, you'll be able to pan the view around. In order to select anything, you can just click with the left mouse button on anything in your scene. And using the number pad, you can actually center to that thing with pressing the zero on the number pad. Uh, sorry, the dot on the number pad. Uh, that allows you to center on anything. So if I select a tree and press the dot on the number pad, I'll center to that tree. Um, the navigation takes a little bit of getting used to, and to begin with, it feels like it's really weird. I'm going to show you some of the absolute basics so that you'll be able to do this. The scene's already been set up, so we have a camera. Um, if you press the zero key, as I mentioned before, you'll view it directly from the camera. So that's when you when you render your animation out as a final movie. It will be rendered from this camera looking at uh, whatever it's looking at. I've set up a little scene for you, and I've set up a character that's already been rigged. And all we're going to do is... Um, we're going to go through and uh, and animate him. The uh, buttons that are up the top here you can see are the different viewport modes. Um, this last one is the actual rendered mode. So this is kind of what the um, final quality will be. And you can see that this Roblox character is my um, my default character that I have in my Roblox game, and it's just set on this simple scene. We've got some the nice reflections and uh, shadows in there as well to make it look good. So let's get started with the animation. So to animate this character, what you need to do is you need to select his bones. So if you click on the bones uh, in here, when you've clicked on the bones, uh, you'll need to change the mode from object mode up the top to pose mode. The pose mode means that um, you'll see it's pose mode because the bones actually go blue. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to just pose this character. So the main keys to do that is um, is the R key to rotate the bones. So the way that the R key works is if I'm facing the character from the front and I select this one of the bones and I tap R, you'll see that the bone rotates relative to my view. You can actually see it over here as well. So because I'm facing from the front here and I tap R, you'll see how it moves relative to the, the view that I have here. Um, so you've got to spend a lot of time uh, oh yeah, Control Z as well is one of the best keys you'll ever learn because if you uh, once you've moved it, if you don't like it, you can just Control Z and it will go back to the way it was. Um, so moving it, moving your camera to the correct side is really important for being able to animate. So rotating around this character, selecting a bone, and then moving, um, moving around again, or pressing R to rotate it, and moving around is the way to get a good result for the animations. There is other ways that we can do this. There's actually a, um, a thing where we can get a, a manipulator so that we're able to kind of see things a little bit easier. But I feel like it, sometimes it just kind of gets in the way a little bit when you're doing this. So, um, so I've left it switched off in this scene. So what we're going to do is we're just going to set up a, a really, really simple animation. The way it works is if you've ever done any stop motion animation, the way it works is you create a pose at this particular keyframe. And the keyframes you can see are across the bottom. We have a movie that starts at frame zero or frame one, sorry, and goes all the way up to 250. You can change whether it, it goes longer or shorter just by the start and the end frame that you see here. So all we need to do is capture what the character is going to look like at frame one and then go forward a few frames and pose it and then capture what it looks like again. And I'll just show you that in action. So the way you capture is um, you can select and pose the character into any pose that you want. You press the I key on the keyboard. So that's the I key. Um, it's the insert keyframe key. And then from that, you go down to the whole character. And that will do a pose um, for the position and rotation and scale of every single bone on the scene. 
I'm going to press the A key now, A for Apple, and that's just going to show you that every single bone is down here, and they've all been given these yellow keyframes for every single, um, for this frame, for all of the position, rotation, and scale for every single bone. Um, what we do from there to make it move is we just go uh, forward a few frames, we select the bones that we want to move, and we then pose them some more. So I'm going to make them do just a really annoying dab. So I'm going to make them go like this. And I'm going to lift this one up as well. And I'm going to make his, um, this arm kind of go across. So if I look from the top and go around like this, maybe from the side and lift it up. And then maybe at the top again and rotate it around a bit more and just rotate this one. Maybe I need to lift his hand up a touch as well. So I'll go to the right angle and lift it up. This one, tap R to lift up again. So I've kind of moved him and I want to get his head to look down a little bit. So I'm going to just going to press, go to the side here, press R to move his head down. And I've got him looking like I kind of want him to look. And then when I'm finished, um, before I move anything, before I move this timeline, you need to press I again, I to insert the keyframe and then choose the whole character again. Now what that's done, if I look at it, is it's given it keyframes for every single bone that I've uh, posed and all of the other ones too at frame 20. And if you drag, so I put your mouse over the, the big blue thing, you can see you drag it between the two. And what it does is it goes from one pose smoothly frame by frame into the pose that you made for the next one. So you get to frame 20 and you have um, the next pose. Now you would repeat that process. Um, you can also copy paste. So if I want him to move back to this one, what I can do is I can hover um, over this, I can press a for all, so if, if nothing's selected and you copy the pose, you're going to copy the pose for nothing. So we press A for all to select everything. And then from the pose menu, you can copy the pose. You can see it's just a standard control C and control V. So if I click copy pose here and I move forward to maybe frame 40, and then I can paste that pose in. So it's from pose, we can do paste pose, or we can use the shortcut control V. You see it goes back to this pose. You'll notice that there's no automatic keyframes being put in here. We're not actually recording this as we go. We have to remember that every time we want to do it, we need to insert the keyframe with the I key. So one more time, I'll press I, press whole character, and you'll see that the keyframes end up going from this frame all the way to the, the arms out and then back down to here. So you can copy paste poses as well. And one thing of interest, if you're interested, is that you can also paste X flipped. So say you're doing a run cycle or something, you want them to run, rather than copy a pose and then try and um, and change it so that it's an exact mirror image, you can just copy the pose and then paste it flipped. And that way you'll be able to have it go um, in the exact mirror image um, of the uh, previous copied pose. And that way you can make things a little bit easier. So I'll put the screencast keys on, so you'll see that um, the keys come up on the left hand side here and all I'm going to do is uh, put some music on and uh, I'm going to do a simple animation and uh, you'll be able to see what's happening as I do that and hopefully you'll be able to follow through and make your own animation by the end of it. So when you've got your amazing animation and you're ready to turn that into a movie so you don't need Blender to use it, 
Um, what you can do is, uh, if you look on the right hand side here, where there's a thing that looks like a, a kind of a printer, it's called output properties. In the output properties, I've already set up some output so that it uses the um, the location that you opened the file from and then it's a uh, movie is going to be the name of the movie it's already been set up to the avi jpeg output which is like a movie output there's lots and lots of other um, settings that can be set from the the menus and sometimes they're a little bit overwhelming in order um, we need to know this so we need to know where it where it is that it's going to go if you need to set this yourself you can just click this little folder and then you can use um, you can just put it straight onto the desktop or onto one of your drives um, I have set it up as I said so it's in the same folder you'll notice as the actual animate me file that um, that you have opened up uh, since it's there you can just go up to the render menu when you know where it's going to go and you click render animation it's control f12 is the shortcut for that so if you click render animation what it'll do is every single frame will get generated um, and added to the movie that you've said down here so movie dot avi will be the final output and it will be a movie file that you'll be able to play without having to have um, blender on your computer and you can share this or put it up on youtube or whatever it is that you want to do um, i'm just going to pause the recording while this finishes and show you what the end result looks like all right so when it's finished you can close this uh, render view here just going to open up that folder you'll see that there's a movie uh triple oh one to 120 so this is the uh, the number of frames that we rendered and just by double clicking on this it'll use the default um thing to open it up um so you can see we've created a movie inside of blender let's play that again so we can see so we've managed to uh use blender to uh, pose and create keyframes in order to make a, a movie and uh, you're free to uh, keep going and make any movies that you want or uh, change the action that you want just one little thing before we finish, I probably should have mentioned this before, but the keyframes here, you can select them individually down here and you can also delete them here as well. So if you need to get rid of keyframes or if you need to scale the keyframes or um, if you need to grab and move the keyframes, you click a single one and you can hit G and move them backwards and forwards. Um, you can also um, select uh, with a box, you can box select around multiple keyframes and you can use the delete key to get rid of them. So that'll, if you do mess up and you want to start again, um, you can just select the keyframes and just get rid of them. Remember, it's only got the keyframes for the selected bones. So if you want to get rid of them all, you'll need to press A for all. And uh, that way you can select all the keyframes at once to delete them all and start again. So hopefully you've had fun and uh, happy animating.